I'm outside the University of West Sussex, and in their computer science department, they're developing some of the most advanced robotics anywhere outside of America and China and Germany and Japan. Also Singapore. Love these guys. Electric lady. Nice. This droid, what's it capable of? That's just the coffee machine. Got it. Is this a coffee machine? No. Could be. Doesn't make coffee. So this is the unit here. It's a fully electronic torque controlled quadruped. We foresee a lot of uses in the industrial cleaning sector as well as around the home. Yeah, it's quite a noisy little, uh, I want to say chap, not quite sure what to call it. Her nickname is Lady. Yeah, I, I don't really do nicknames. Can you switch it off, please? I asked you to turn it off, please. Sorry, love. Oh. I've got to say, I remain something of a skeptic. Call me a Luddite, I don't even have a tease made. Let alone a computerized Japanese toilet like Jonathan Ross. I've thrown a heavy towel over Alexa. Nevertheless, the nerds here have allowed me to take this robot dog home. Its name is Unit One, not Lady. First, I wanted to put it through its paces. And with four legs powered by four servo motors, it's a robot with as much bite as bark. Not the quietest droid, but with a top speed of a nifty six, it's quick enough to outrun anyone with a mobility issue. But are we ready for robots? Could you trust this face? Look at it. The idea of robotics isn't new. Aristotle wrote about automata replacing slavery in 322 BC. That's three centuries before Christ. Allow me to put that in context. That he just did. Well, and then there was Buddhist scholar Dao Xuan who imagined metal humanoid automata that could recite sacred texts. So the appearance of being intelligent was actually just the ability to read out loud. Precisely. Yeah. Hugh Edwards. But what if doing no harm involves moral ambiguity? Take self-driving cars. What if swerving to avoid hitting someone on the road involves mounting the curb and hitting someone else? How does the robot decide whom to harm and whom to save? Could use of the word whom, but it is a dilemma. If a, a robot car was hurtling towards a pregnant woman pushing a pram, of course, it would swerve to avoid her, even if it meant hitting another pedestrian. But what if that pedestrian was a senior politician like Grant Shapps? Now you've put that robot in an impossible situation. Well, there's also the issue of automatons serving us in a range of different ways, um, some of them in perhaps more intimate ways. Do you mean sex robots? Well, yes. Yeah, that's weird, because I don't think I've thought about that before. But do you think that would be all right, then, to do that? Well, it's a question that's never been addressed. Because there could be for women, too. It'd just be a case of adapting an existing unit. But perhaps a more complex issue is how to manage an emotional connection. You could imagine a robot one day providing the same companionship a dog might. My dog would be a hard act to follow. Yes, some people do form strong emotional attachments with their dogs. Not like me and Seldom. Is, uh, he passed on a couple of weeks ago. But I, I was actually at a fun fair. In one minute he was barking at the waltzers, the next minute he was, as I thought, asleep next to the ghost train, funnily enough. But um, no, he'd... Um, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, he's a big fella, yeah, but I tell you, he showed a damn sight more sensitivity than half the people on this planet. Well, that's the thing with these moral dilemmas. I think it's... He used to stand on his hind legs and put his paws on his shoulders and then just dance around the room. Yeah. Yeah. I miss him. He's a really, really good dog. <laughs>